the program, the use of Supriano, and also the lecturers. First of all, last thanks to the Almighty Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala because of His blessing, we are able to come here in today's webinar series. And thank you, and also thank you to all of you for joining us in this exciting journey. I am Rizki Katapani, the moderator of today's webinar. I'm very pleased to see all of you here and welcome all of you to this webinar. I hope you all in great health, mood, and also spirit in joining this webinar. But, but before we begin this webinar series today, I would like to read some of the regulations first. First, this webinar will last for one and a half hour. Second, the only language used to communicate is English. Third, all participants are suggested to take notes in the presentation. Four, all participants must turn off the audio or mic during the presentation. Fifth, the presentation will be held in five to seven minutes for each presenter. Sixth, the moderator will set the time to remind the whole presentation. Seven, the Q&A session will come after the whole presentation. Questions can be typed in the chat box since the early presentation, or anyone who is interested in talking directly to the presenters is pleased to raise your hand. We will facilitate you if we still have time. And eight, if you could not get your answer, the presenters will send the answer via email. Right, before we start the presentations today, I would like to introduce you to the speakers who are gonna be presenting their materials. There are seven members in this uh, group. Shifa Hofia Masaida, Fiaris Fiana, Haifa Nulis Tianingsi, Aina Amale Izati, Ursa Liza Adawiyah, Anini Salma Fifa, and last but not least is Rena Mawiya. And today they'll present about being fluent in English, the preparation for global participation. Well, without further ado, I'd like to welcome our presenters to start the presentation. First is Shifa Hofifa Saida with her material about building EFL learners' confidence to speak in English. Break the limit. So to Shifa, the time is yours. Maybe you can uh, share the screen first. Thank you. Firstly, first, uh, am my, uh, is my voice clear enough? Yes, loud and clear. All right, thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, ladies, gentlemen, and honored lectures. My name is Shifa Kofifa, aka Unsolved to the Paradox with a dry sense of humor. At the very first start, let me say that we have something, we both have something in common. You don't know what I'm going to say, and neither do I. But anyway, thank you for coming to this webinar. Here I am going to talk about building EFL learners' confidence to speak in English, follow the tagline, break the limits. So why do I bring this topic? It is because this is based on a study that I found here, the, the primary speaking struggle factors is because of psychological factors. Next slide, please. So, based on this chart, there are separate factors, but you can see here, psychological factors is the highest among the factors. But what is psychological factors? That is psychological disorder, which often interfere the emotional or psycho health. And here, researcher, the researchers that. here said that this problem can increase the risk of pain, death, suffering, and also disability. And here, the psychology factor, the psychological factors have two aspects. The first one is because of lack of confidence, and the second one is anxiety. And in this occasion, I am going to talk about one of them, which is lack of confidence. So, are you an unconfident if EFL learners? Well, I hope this material can help you to through this problem. Next slide, please. So here, what are the causes of lack confidence? The main causes of students' confidence is because of their low ability to speak in English, right? So I studied from researchers Fitriani, named Fitriani and Aprilia Swati, 2015, said that there are three major causes. The first one is less appreciation, and it happens when the students only focus to what other people think and only focus to what they want. 
to do what they want. And number two, they feel their cycle form is not perfect. Along with some lines personal thought, cycle fitness has a huge effect on confidence. So if you are someone who always lazy to do something, and I think that is one of the problems and factors that you are not confident to speak in front of a lot of people. Number three, often ostracized by the, their peer. I have a story. One day I got called pretty and it is felt too. But actually the full sentence was, you're pretty annoying. But here I am choosing the focus to focus on the positive one. And I think that is the one way for you to do this process, to believe in yourself, to take the positivity from effort. Then next, how to how how do we uh, need to do to build our confidence? Here, a researcher in London in 2020 told that there are three crucial points that we need to do to build our confidence. The first one is confidence. You, do you always find students who always think negatively about themselves? Yes, of course, always. Is it, is it, is it, isn't, it, isn't it right? But, you know, they often build that feeling on the others in form of insults and gossip. And to break this cycle of negativity, try to get the habit of praising people, praising other people. And here, respect, is, respect the other is the most crucial thing that we need to always remember. Number two, speak up. During the group discussions, do you ever experience that people, so many people didn't speak up because they are afraid that people would judge them for saying something stupid. But making an, but, but making an effort to speak up, that student would be become a better public speaker and looks confident than the other in other people's thoughts. And here, a Car Caroline Goulder, one of the TED presenter, once said that if you're worrying about how it might go wrong, don't do that. Don't, don't ever think like that. But you need to worry about what it will be like when it, when it goes right. So number three here, practice the most crucial thing. Why do we need practice? because we learn second language. We need to learn a lot about the language, isn't it? Not only to use the language, but we need to adapt with, with the target language itself. Means that the language is not only about the, the structure, the vocabulary and grammar, but we cannot also uh, separate the culture of the target language too. Next slide, please. And here, let's jump up to the last part. A wise man once said that when you have, when you have, sorry, yeah, when you have a lot of confidence and you feel like nobody can beat you, it's game over for everyone else. Means that building confidence is the most crucial factors for you to show up your ability to live a wonderful life. However lonely you feel, you're never alone. Look around you. There are literally millions of bugs, mites, and bacteria living in your house. You're never been alone. Thank you for coming to this webinar. I hope you have a really, really, really nice week. See you when I see you. Break the limit. And next slide, please. And here are some references that I used to make this presentation. If there is a question, please do not hesitate to write it on the chat box down below. Thank you. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Shifa, for your amazing material and also your presentation. So, in short, confidence plays an important part in everything, especially, I'm sorry, especially to speak in a foreign language, English in this case, because when we have the confidence, it's easier to learn new things, especially language. Once again, thank you, Shifa, for your presentation. Let's move on to the next presenter. It's Fia Fiana with her material about stop ignoring why EVL learners need to give it more attention. Hmm. Why we should give it more attention? 
Well, we're getting new in this material. So, Sophia, the time is yours. All right, thank you very much, moderator. But maybe you can share the screen first. All right, and then I'm going to check my voice. Is my voice audible? Yes, it is loud and clear. All right, thank you so much. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for coming. I really appreciate you taking the time to join us in the session. My name is Tia Resbiana. I'm from Silicon University. And what I'd like to present to you today is about stop ignoring listening while UFL learners need to give it more attention. Next slide, please. All right, now let's take a look at this picture. Do you know who she is? Yes, she is Cinderella. And I'm sure that everyone is familiar with the story of Cinderella. The beautiful and kind-hearted young woman who was forced to become a servant in her own house and was neglected because her stepmother only cared about her own daughters. Now you might be wondering, what does this have to do with listening? Well, let's reveal the answer. Next slide, please. So listening is considered as the Cinderella of language learning. Just like Cinderella, apparently listening to negative language learning. Listening is taken for granted and overlooked by its sister speaking according to themselves. This is because being able to use that language. Therefore, people tend to focus more on listening, I mean on speaking. Then, how about now? Is listening still neglected? Unfortunately, the answer is yes. A study conducted by Language ED in 2021 to see how much listening has been studied by researchers showed that from the number of articles they considered, only 14% were related to listening. It is far less compared to speaking, reading, and writing. You can see in the Then in classrooms, studies also found that most teachers prefer to implement listening to follow strategies. Next slide, please. Now, why does it matter? Well, it should not be difficult to realize that listening is essential when we consider the amount of researches that highlighted the significance of listening in language learning, as you can see in my screen. Therefore, EFL learners really need to start paying more attention on listening. And here, I have summarized three main reasons why listening is very important for EFL learners. Next slide, please. And next slide, please. All right. The first one, listening provides input for the learners. Input refers to the exposure learners have to authentic language in use. It is essential for the learners because without input, learning simply cannot occur. And here, Frost and Ulum stated that listening provides input for the learners. By listening to podcasts, radio, music, for example, learners can get a sense of how the language they learn, in this case English, are used in real setting. Then, Peterson in 2001 also Is it as, as spoken which received through listening? The test is tomorrow. And he responses with, Are you kidding me? And you don't understand the phrases, but of surprise.
Okay, I think she have some connection problem. Just, just wait for a good minute, please. All right, I'm so sorry. I'm having internet connection trouble. So I will just continue my presentation. Uh, next slide, please. All right, the second one, listening helps the development of other language skills. If you look back to our past when we were babies, we didn't immediately have the ability to speak language, right? Back then, we cried all the time to express our emotions. But however, babies are born with the ability to hear. So listening is the first skill to develop. Then we learn to speak our first language by listening to the conversation going on around us. Well, the ability to write and develops as we get older. This is in line with Flower Drew and Miller's statement in 2005. And it is to indicate that listening promotes the development of speaking, reading, and writing skills because it is the first skill to appear. Renuka Devi also supported this claim. Furthermore, she mentioned that studies have shown that when we communicate, we gain 45% of language competence from listening. Next slide, please. All right, last but not least, Listening is the most frequent used skill in communication. According to British Council, of the total time adults spend on communicating, listening takes up 45%. This is not a surprising fact, I guess, because in our daily life, we listen a lot. As soon as we wake up in the morning, for example, we listen to our mom telling us to have breakfast. Then we listen to our friend's stories, our teacher explanation in the classroom, and so on. No wonder Guo and Wills in 2006 state that people gain a significant portion of their education, information, and, under and understanding of the world through listening. Next slide, please. Well, this brings me to the end of my presentation. To conclude, listening should not be ignored in English language learning because it is the key to receive language input, the way to develop other language skills and the means of effective communication. Let's free listening the Cinderella of language skills from ignorance by starting to listen more. Now let me close this presentation by a quote from Dalai Lama. When you talk, you're only repeating what you are already know. But if you listen, you may learn something new. Next slide, please. All right, and this is the references I use for my presentation. If you have any question, you can type it in the chat box and I will try my best to answer it. I'm Fiat Esbiana. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I give it back to the moderator. Okay, thank you. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Fiat, for your amazing presentation and material. And in short, it plays a significant role in both a daily communication and education process. It is one of the four major skills in language acquisitions as it applies to learner with input. And it is the, medi the medium which people gained a large proportion of their education, information, ideals, and, and et cetera. Once again, thank you, Fia, for your presentation. Now let's move on to the next presenter. It's Haifa Nuli Standing C with her material about Wattpad to improve vocabulary skills for EFL students. How Wattpad can improve our vocabulary skills? Well, we soon get a new in this material. So to Haifa, the time is yours. All right, thank you to the moderator for the opportunity. Uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. How are you today? I hope you are always in good condition. First of all, I would like to thank everyone who participated in this webinar. Thank you also uh, to the moderator who helped with the webinar. And I also thank, thank to Mrs. Arini Nurul for being here with us. Before I deliver my, my presentation, 
Let me introduce myself. I'm Haifa Nulistia Ningsi from English Education Department Siliwangi University. And here I will deliver a presentation with the topic is utilizing web tab to improve vocabulary, vocabulary skills for EFL students. Next slide, please. All right, here I will present three tables of content. And the first is defining vocabulary. The second is media for learning vocabulary. And the third web fed uh, for EFL students. All right, the first is defining vocabulary. What is vocabulary? Vocabulary is a basic component that is very important to be learned when learners, when, when learners want to learn a foreign language. Vocabulary is the most important component of language because it affects the four language skills. There are listening, speaking, reading, and writing. April 2006 say that generically vocabulary is the knowledge of meanings of words, also a central part of a language. According to Schmidt and McCarthy, vocabulary has an important role in language skills. Without having uh, enough vocabulary, the students will have difficulties to know the meaning of what what they listen and read, as well as to express their aim in communication. To make mystery and vocabulary more interesting, uh, good media are needed. Next slide, please. All right, the second is media for learning vocabulary. There are many kinds of online media that can be used to increase student vocabulary mystery. Webpad application is one of the media which permits the user to access, interact, give, and receive feedback with other users. Webpad is one of the online media that is expected to enhance students to be more active in English class. Webpad can be accessed from anywhere and anytime. Webpad has expertise with a combination of web, of web image cartoons or comics and can insert videos. This online media is quite effective to improve vocabulary mastery skills well. Next slide, please. All right, the next is webpad for EFL students. Halliwell 1991 assumes that because of the creative language skills young learners bring into the classroom, teachers should provide them with a communicative atmosphere in which they can express themselves freely. When using the web page to teach vocabulary to millennial learners, teachers should train students in reading and mastering the linguistic part of the language. Teachers can add web page reading activities and assign students to write or explain vocabulary from, the, from what they have read. After that, they can understand and remember it. Teachers can hold daily exams at any time with the vocabulary questions that they get. And I think uh, it is quite effective for students to improve their vocabulary. The webpad is used to assist students during their language learning, make class inter interesting to learn. This English webpad application is indeed an interesting way to improve ourselves in speaking English especially for vocabulary. In addition, there are many pictures to strike students' interest. Then uh, there was a simple conversation over it. And most importantly, uh, this application can still be accessed for free in the midst of other paid learning applications. But that is useful for intermediate and advanced students, especially for millennial students who want to master vocabulary. In addition to interesting stories, uh, there are also materials about the English language. As you can see, uh, this is an example of a story and a collection of English vocabulary. Next slide, please. All right, uh, and the last one is the conclusion. It can be concluded that the use of the web page is effective in teaching students vocabulary mastery. Uh, WebPad can also help teachers to facilitate vocabulary teaching through electronic media. With this application, students uh, can be active in class and pay more attention to understanding new vocabulary. 
This media can not only be used in the classroom, but also can be used outside the classroom or even at home, because this application can be installed on any smartphone. Next slide, please. All right. Here also I have some references from the presentation I just go through. Uh, all right, that can, that's all I can say. Uh, sorry if there are mistakes. If there is something you want to ask, you can write in the chat box. I will return to the moderator. Thank you very much for the attention. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Haifa, for your amazing material and presentation. So, uh, Wattpad. Wattpad is an application that um, surprisingly is effective in teaching students vocabulary mastery and to facilitate vocabulary teaching with a more modern approach in hopes students can be active in class and pay more attention by using this method. Once again, thank you, Haifa, for your presentation. Next, let's move on to the next presenter is Aina Amal Izati with her material about watching English movies without subtitles. Why not? Hmm. It's a little bit confusing uh, why watching English movies without subtitles is actually helping us. Well, let's listen to, his, to her material. So to Aina, the time is yours. All right, thank you, moderator. But is my voice clear? Yes, it is clear. All right, thank you. So, uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So, first of all, I would like to thank the moderator who led the meeting today, and also thank to Mrs. Alini Nurul Hidayat, yes, the lecture, for the opportunity. I also don't forget to thank all ladies and gentlemen who are willing to attend today's webinar. So, before I start delivering my material, it would be nice to introduce myself first. I'm Aina Maria Izati. So, on this occasion, I will share the material about watching English movies. So, surely some of you are asking, why should we talk about watching English movies? Okay, I'm sure that we have all watched English movies, right? So as, uh, as the beginner, we always show the subtitles in the movie to know what and understand the characters in the film are saying. Is that right? Okay, by the way, did you know that watching movies without subtitles also has its benefits? So what are the benefits of watching movies without subtitles? Are you curious? Therefore, the topic I will share today is about watching English movies without subtitles. Why not? Okay, next slide, please. Okay, here I divide my presentation into three sections. The first is about the relationship between English movies and English skills. The second is the role of English movies in helping to improve speaking skills. The last about the benefits of watching these movies without subtitles. Next slide, please. Okay, now I will start to share the first topic. It is about the relationship between English movies and English skills. So, about movie, here are two explanations from summer 2001 and Nita et al. 2020 regarding the influence and relationship between English movies and English skills. If I can conclude, these explanations say that we can use these English movies as a foundation to improve our English language skills, especially our ability to speak English and understand language. So it can be seen that we can improve our English skills just by watching a movie. Next slide, please. Okay, the next topic is about the role of English movies in helping to improve speaking skills. So, according to Albila et al., Uzaman and Roy 2018, Leandro 2021, as an E of L students, English movies can make our fluency, pronunciation, intonation much better. And it also can enhance our vocabulary awareness so that our speaking ability can improve. And then watching these movies help our speaking skills, uh, especially our fluency in speaking, because we're always hearing native accent in that movie. In these movies, uh, the actors and actresses must have accents that are sometimes the same or different. So in that way, we can learn a lot of accents and learn how to pronounce the words in the different English accents. Because of that, uh, we also can get the idea about how we can connect or linking the words. We know that uh, about how to put the right intonation or certain words and sentences. So our speaking is more fluent like natives and that might be bored to hear. 
In addition, watching these movies can also help us to learn and find out new vocabulary that we may have uh, never heard or known or known before, which will also be related to how we pronounce the words. Next slide, please. Thank you. And the next topic is about the benefits of watching these movies without subtitles. Some of us must think that subtitles are great because they allow us to fill in the gaps and help us to understand the movies very well. But in fact, we also need to know that the subtitles don't really expand our knowledge and sometimes distract us. So according to Lisi, the biggest benefit of turning off the subtitles is the improvement in our English uh, speaking skills. And then turning off subtitles in English movies makes each movie in to an existing lesson. So while we face with several different accents, we can listen and also practice how to pronounce words in many accents without feeling distracted. And in addition, turning off subtitles also help us to get used to many different accents, uh, speech steps, and intonations to smooth our speaking skills. And also by turning off subtitles, we can build our confidence because watching these movies without subtitles will teach us to better recognize speech patterns and changes in intonation that will be much more natural. So we should believe in ourselves uh, that uh, we will be amazed at what we can achieve when we put our mind to it. All right, next slide, please. Okay, all right, everyone, we now get into uh, the conclusion of the presentation. After I explain it to you, we all know that watching English movies can help us to improve our language skills, especially our English speaking skills. So as I explained it to you that with English movies, we can improve our speaking skills so that we can speak and use English more fluently like natives and uh, what we are said will not feel bored. Okay, and then turning off subtitles in English movies makes, uh, makes each movie into an existing lesson because we can learn many things from it and watching these movies is enjoying ways to learn English. And now, I invite you to learn English by starting watching English movies to get a fun learning experience. Okay, everyone, before I close my presentation, let me say just one quote from Jonathan Culver that might inspire and encourage you to learn English. So he said that the English language is a work in progress, so you need to have fun with it. Okay, that, uh, next slide, please. Okay, that's all for me, and here are my references. So, all right, ladies and gentlemen, if you have a question, please do not hesitate to ask me. Thank you for your attention. I'm so sorry if I had a lot of mistakes. I hope what I said uh, can be useful for all of us. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Back to the moderator. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Aina, for your amazing material and presentation. So, in short, Turning off the subtitle, it can enhance our vocab awareness and may and also make our pronunciation and intonation a lot better. By turning off the subtitles, also makes any movie into an exciting lesson. Once again, thank you, Aina, for the presentation. Okay, just a reminder: if uh, all the participants, if you have uh, any question, you can just type it in the chat box. Uh, you can you are allowed to type the the questions early. But if you want, if you want to interact with the presenters, you have to wait in the question and answer session. Okay, let's move on to the next presenter. It's Andini Salma Afifa with her material about avoiding cultural appropriation by introducing students and to intercultural communication. How intercultural communication can avoid cultural appropriation and what is cultural appropriation? Let's listen to her material. So to Andini, the time is yours. All right, thank you so much, moderator. First of all, am I audible? Yes. Thank you. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's really a pleasure to meet each one of you in here. First of all, I would like to say thanks to the moderator for hosting this wonderful webinar and allowing us to present our presentation. And also, I would like to say thanks to all the lecturers for being here with us today and not forgetting to all of my beloved friends who has attended this webinar. All right, ladies and gentlemen, before we go to our presentation, 
let me introduce myself first. My name is Andini Salma Afifah, and I'm from Siliwangi University. And today, I would like to bring a topic related to our daily life, and probably one of you have already heard about it before. All right, avoiding cultural appropriation by introducing students to intercultural communication. Ladies and gentlemen, cultural appropriation is a very common phrase that have already familiar in our, our life, right? But did you know what it exactly cultural appropriation means? Next slide, please. All right, now what comes to your mind when you see these pictures? Is it a casual fashion show or is it a cultural appropriation? Next slide, please. All right, according to 2022, cultural appropriation, uh, Sorry, according to Sunsik 2022, cultural appropriation is referring to the use of objects or elements of a non-dominant culture in a way that reinforces stereotypes or contributes to the oppressions and doesn't respect their original meaning or giving credits to the sources. Simply, cultural appropriation can be defined as an inappropriate adoption of the customs, practices, ideas, or any other cultural elements of one people or society by another members of typically more dominant society. Next slide, please. So basically, cultural appropriation is an adoption of culture by other society without giving any credits to its culture in a disrespectful and exploitative way. Yes, cultural appropriation happens in disrespectfully and exploitative way. Next slide, please. According to Sunsik as well, cultural appropriation includes the unauthorized use of parts of the uh, culture and it can include dresses, dances, languages, and any other elements. He also stated that cultural appropriation can happen if you have a position or power or if you are a member of a dominant culture which is able to take the parts of marginalized culture and enforce their original meaning without considering their original context just for entertainment. Right, next slide, please. Cultural appropriation is not the same as cultural appreciation. Remember, cultural appropriation is not the same as cultural appreciation. Cultural appropriation involves lacks of understanding of the historical context that influences the culture that is being taken, while cultural appreciation is a respectful borrowing elements from other culture with a huge interest in sharing ideas. Now we can see the difference here, right? Cultural appropriation is this respectful way of borrowing some cultures of other uh, society, while cultural appreciation is respectful borrowing of uh, parts of the elements from other culture for, uh, for the aim uh, for sharing ideas and find the meaning behind this culture. Next slide, please. Now, ladies and gentlemen, how do we avoid cultural appropriation? Well, as a student, uh, especially if you are majoring in English education, we can educate ourselves by giving credits or recognizing the origins of a culture. And we can also take time to learn and appreciate a culture. And of course, we can learn intercultural communication to recognize the difference of other culture. Now, uh, before we go further, I wanna know, uh, do you know what is intercultural communication? All right, next slide, please. According to Stephen Klein 2016, intercultural communication is a communication or interaction between people with different cultural identities that create meanings and bringing their varied cultural background. Intercultural communication is not always between the language uses, but it can also happen by verbal and nonverbal interaction. So simply, intercultural communication is just like our daily communication but with other people from other cultural background. And it can happen uh, not only by verbally, but also non-verbally. Now, in learning or understanding intercultural communication, we need to be interculturally competent. For what? Of course, to avoid future misunderstanding with other people from other culture. Therefore, as a student, we need to be able to communicate effectively and appropriately in various cultural contexts. Next slide, please. All right, 
ladies and gentlemen, from the presentation earlier, we can conclude that cultural appropriation is reversed to the action of taking something that doesn't belong to any groups of organization inappropriately. Cultural appropriation also is not just about an object, but it's about a power and domination. Now, intercultural communication is a communication amongst the various culture that happens verbally and non-verbally. Therefore, learning intercultural communication will allow us to think globally and communicate effectively in any various cultural contexts. All right, uh, next slide, please. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is the reference I use for my presentation. And I think that's all I can say for my presentation today. I hope what we have learned today can add to our insight about culture all around the world. Next slide, please. Now, if you have any question related to the topic uh, that I have uh, shared to you, you can directly ask me or contact me on the numbers or my email address. Now, thank you so much for your kind attention. Stay healthy, stay happy, and spread love everywhere. I'm Andini Salma Afifa signing out. See you. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I give it back to the moderator. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, um, Andini, for your amazing presentation and material. So, so by introducing this, the intercultural communication, it, uh, either verbally or non verbally will allow us to think uh, more globally and also communicate uh, effectively in any cultural context to avoid any cultural appropriation that might happen. Once again, thank you, Anini, for, for your presentation. Next, move on to the next presenter is Elsa Liza Adawia with her material about how can extensive reading foster EFL learners' re reading comprehension. Well, if all the participants are curious with this, we, uh, we should listen to this material. So <clears throat> to Elsa, the time is yours. All right. Thank you to the moderator for the opportunity. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for attending this session. It is such an honor to be able to meet all of you in this presentation. First of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Elsa Liza Adawiya. On this occasion, I'm going to talk about how can extensive reading foster EFL learners reading comprehension. Uh, next slide, please. And here's an overview of my presentation. There are extensive reading, reading comprehension, conclusion, and references. All right, everyone, without any further ado, let's start this presentation. Firstly, here I will uh, explain about extensive reading. Are any of you know what is extensive reading? Santos 2015 has defined extensive reading as any form of reading that is considered a pleasing activity for the readers. From his statement, uh, we can conclude that extensive reading refers to the act where the readers would read of their own will rather than being forced, which can stimulate positive emotions that uh, inspire them to make reading a personal desire. Uh, so is extensive reading important? Yes, one of the reasons why extensive reading is important is because it is seen as a social practice that is significant when it comes to communication and understanding the world. There are also two prime reasons for the importance of extensive reading, which revolve around sharing knowledge with close people such as friends and family and fitting into the surrounding environment. And as you can see, according to Wilkinson 2015, extensive reading can also enrich people's passion and boost their self-confidence. And what are the benefits of extensive reading? Atia 2019 emphasized that extensive reading increases reading speed and comprehension, motivates the reader's attitude toward learning the target language, develops their language competency, and improves their language skills. And another researcher, Abyss 2016, also stated that extensive reading can aid foreign uh, readers in establishing the foundations <laughs> for achieving both literacy and active citizenship. 
which can be acquired by drawing upon experiences and expectations from the foreign socio-cultural setting. Next slide, please. All right, moving on to the next material, let's discuss about reading comprehension. What exactly is reading comprehension? Hence and hence 2015 defined reading comprehension as the capacity with which a person can comprehend a text. Reading comprehension is very important, especially for EFL learners, because they can bring the knowledge outside of the text. And are there any factors affecting reading comprehension? Yes, of course, Sanford 2015 believes that reading comprehension is affected mainly by six factors. What are they? The first one is working memory to read competently and understand the text. The second one is uh, vocabulary because committing lexical errors is one of the recurring errors. Thus, we could learn from our repeated mistakes. The third one is prior knowledge to understand any text we would encounter. Then word recognition allows the reader to receive knowledge from the text. The next one is reading strategies because suitable reading strategies play an essential role in the improvement of reading comprehension skills among EFL learners. And last but not least is, of course, our motivation to read, especially our intrinsic motivation to acquire new skills and experiences. Next slide, please. All right, uh, from what I explained, uh, we can conclude that extensive reading has positive impacts on enhancing reading comprehension, especially for EFL learners. Reading what we like significantly will affect the reading comprehension among the readers and learners. Thus, teachers and educators are suggested to apply for more reading programs in schools in order to encourage reading for students. It is also recommended to perform more studies that aim to uh, understand the true potential of reading and its impact on EFL learners reading comprehension. Next slide, please. All right, everyone, before I close my presentation, I have a quote here if all of you still find that reading is boring. Confucius once said that you must find time for reading or surrender yourself to self-chosen ignorance. Next slide, please. And here are the references for the material that I presented. All right, I think uh, that's all I can explain in this presentation. Hopefully it will be useful for all of you. I'm sorry if there are any mistakes. If you have any questions, you can write it in the chat box. Thank you so much for your attention. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I'll give it back to the moderator. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Elsa, for your amazing and material and presentation. So, <clears throat> Reading uh, uh, what we like is significantly affects the reading comprehension between readers and learners. It's recommended to perform more studies in order to understand the true potential of reading. So once again, thank you, Elsa, for your presentation. Let's move on to the last but not least presenters. It's Rena Mauria with her material about teaching speaking to FL students. How to how 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 are the methods to teach speaking, especially to EFL students? Well, let's find out in her material. So, to Rena, the time is yours. All right. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. First of all, I would like to say thank you to the moderator for giving me this opportunity, and also thank you to everyone who attended today's webinar. Uh, hello everyone, my name is Rena Molina, and in this session, I'm going to deliver a topic entitled uh, Teaching Speaking to EFL Students. Next slide, please. So here is the contents of my presentation. The first one is introduction, and the next to the tips for staging the speaking activity, and the next to the speaking activities, and then the conclusion, and the last one is references. All right, so without any further ado, let's move to the first point. Uh, most of EFL students have the good ability in writing, reading, listen, and listening, but they are poor at speaking because there are some problems faced by the EFL students during the speaking activity. For example, uh, the students are nervous or they lack of confidence 
or they afraid of making mistakes and it makes the other people laugh at them. So that teacher has the important role to help the students to this and then the other reasons why teachers have to teach the speaking lesson is to provide the students an opportunity, an opportunity to practice the real life speaking conversation in the classroom uh, so that the students will feel more safe to speak in English in the classroom because uh, all the students in the classroom are in the same level and it will minimize the students nervousness. And then the second one is to provide the feedback for both teachers and students to assess whether the provided activity is good or not and uh, to evaluate uh, the problem faced by students during the speaking activity. And then the next point is how is the good speaking activity? So the good speaking activity for EFL students are the activities that could engage the students' interaction. So teachers uh, should design the uh, activity that could in, engage the students and enable the students uh, to interact as much as possible. And then the good speaking activity is the activity that could build the student's confidence. Uh, most of students are nervous and confident to speak in foreign language and it is very normal. And to build the student's confidence, uh, teachers uh, should give le less judgments and responsible to all the students. Uh, next slide, please. And here I have the tips for staging uh, the speaking activity from Michael Rogers in 2015. So the classroom activity, the speaking activity should be provided into some session like this. The first one is a warm up session. So uh, teachers uh, should give, should provide warm up session before going to the uh, main activity. Uh, it is such as an introduction related to the activity or the topic, and it uh, it will help the students to uh, memorize memorize their. Uh, experience related to the activity. And then the second one is the exposure and framework. In this session, a teacher may give the students some question related to the topic uh, to answer. And then next to the main session, it is the practice activity. And this practice activity divided into two categories. The first one is controlled practice. In this controlled practice, a teacher leads the students to speak. For example, teacher asks the students to answer the question orally. And then the second one is free practice. In this free practice, teacher give the students uh, freedom to speak anything. For example, a teacher ask uh, them to uh, give their opinion or their comments related to the provided topic. And through the successful staging speaking activity, both of teachers and students uh, will feel more prepared themselves and the students will uh, memorizing their vocabulary and speak more efficiently. And now, speaking activities that could teacher bring to the EFL classroom. So uh, next slide, please. Here is it. The first one is role play activity. This role play activity is a method of acting out particular ways of interacting with others in imaginary situation. And this role play activity uh, promotes the interaction in the classroom and it will uh, increase the student's motivation. Not only that, this role play activity also can uh, stimulate the students in real life and it gives the students an opportunity to practice communicating in the different social context and the different social roles. And then the second activity is storytelling. Storytelling is retelling the story that had been read or heard by the storytellers and using their own words based on their understanding about that, about that story. And the storytelling trains uh, the students to explore the language and then to connect their imagination about the story and also try to build up the relation uh, with their factual environment. And then the third activity is debate. Uh, this debate activity is a speaking activity that allows the students to express their, their thought or opinion. And this uh, debate activity uh, could encourage the students' creativity to explore the language since they have to uh, develop their arguments from certain motions. All right, next slide, please. So in conclusion, uh, EFL students have some problems uh, to speak in English and teachers has, have an important role to help the students to improve their speaking skill and those speaking activities. Uh, teacher has an important role to help the students to improve their speaking skill by creating the interesting uh, activity and those speaking activities, uh, storytelling, 
role play and debate could improve the students' uh, speaking involvement in the classroom, and it for sure could help the students to improve their speaking skill. And whatever the activity that teachers bring to uh, the AFL classroom to practice that speaking activity more efficiently, part of teachers and students have to well prepared uh, by following the tips for staging that speaking activity. Uh, next slide, please. And here are the references for my presentation. And since it seems most of the audience here are the English education students, so I will close this presentation with a quotation from Richard Branson. Next slide, please. You don't learn to walk by following the rules, but you learn by doing and falling over. It means that we couldn't uh, speak in English fluently only by following the teacher's instruction in the classroom. We have to practice it in our life, even sometimes you are making mistakes, but from that mistake, we learn more and do the better one. I'm Reda Molina. Thank you for your nice attention. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Back to the moderator. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, <clears throat> Rena, for your amazing material and presentation. So, in short, uh, speaking activities could improve the students' speaking skills and to practice it more efficiently or effectively, both teachers and student, students have to be well prepared. If not, both teachers and students cannot reach their end goal. I think that concludes <clears throat> our... <clears throat> uh presentation today well, let's move and we will go ahead and take some time for questions now just a reminder please be sure to type your question into the chat box in your control panel or just raise your hand thank you Let's okay in the chat box first. Yeah. It's from Indira Ayu Sabrina Rizki. Oh, to whom okay. she have a question for Shifa. <clears throat> but in your opinion, is it better to just not and agree to the English even uh, if they are wrong, or should we just tell them right English? Uh, uh, sorry, or should we just tell them the right English if we have the intention to correct to correct the English so they can be better? How should we tell them in the right way so they won't feel timid to talk in English next time? Thank you. Thank you, Rizky, and thank you for Indira for the questions. So, uh, uh, as I can see here, there's two questions. The first question is, is it better to just nod or you can just say that you can ignore the mistakes that our partner made? Or, and, and the second question is how to tell our partner so that they are, uh, they are, well, that they are concerned about their mistakes to speak in English, but it cannot make uh, them time it to speak in English again. So the answer is it depends. It depends. There are three. Uh, what is that? There are three conditions. The first one is we can. Uh, we usually use it English. Uh, in daily conversation, and the second one, there is uh, practice when you when you want to speak in English when you are practice, and also uh, when you know uh, in a classroom to uh, to do the communicate to do the communication with the lecturers, and the third one is formal formal event. So uh, this is what I mean. In if you do the speak in English. If you speak in English in daily conversation first, if your partner made a mistake, it is better for you to tell them that uh, that uh, that there is something wrong with the sentence. But you cannot uh, what is it say something intimidating. So you can say that you can use something like sorry or ask them again with more what is that with more. Uh, slowly questions to make them comfortable to speak in English. And that's the point, to make the old partner comfortable to speak in English is the most crucial thing here. And the second one, practice or when you speak in English in classroom. Here, you need to, uh, both of speaker and listener need to engage with the classroom. You need to make your uh, vision that classroom is a place to 
practice in English. So uh, I think you cannot be afraid or what is that? You cannot, you need to engage with them so that if you're afraid, you cannot think that if you, what is that? If you're afraid, you cannot think that speaking English in front of the class is something, uh, what is that? Make you down. But if you're engaged with the class and you think that practice and asking the, the lectures or your friends, that is kind of like practice, you know, practice to make yourself build your skill, your yourself skill up, you know. So if you if you're afraid, you you just you cannot you cannot step up from that stuff. So both of speaker and listeners, you need to change your vision if you're learning in classroom. You cannot be afraid to speak up. That's number two. And number three, there is the condition called former events. So if in the former events, you cannot be like uh, ask ask directly or or even like judge them directly, but you need to put more effort to listen to the speaker and uh, respect to them. But if you have really crucial questions, you can find a contact person of the speaker like that to make it more like. And, and and try to speak politely in a former event like that. Maybe maybe the question the questions answered. So Indira, are you satisfied with the answer? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Shifa, for uh, answering the question. And I hope uh, Indira is uh, satisfied with uh, the the answer. Okay. Now we have one person who is raised her hand. Her name is Sheila Ilaini. So Sheila, you can go ahead and ask the question. Uh, okay, uh, thank you, moderator. So uh, firstly, can you hear my voice? Yes, I can hear your voice loud and clear. Okay, thank you. Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Sheila and First of all, I would like to appreciate everyone, all the presenters who already presented some kind of like interesting topics today. And I would ask uh, to Andini. Is there Andini here? Yes, it is. Okay, Andini. Morning, Andini. How are you doing? Hope you're doing great. So I really uh, interested in your topic about intercultural communication, some kind of things. So, and I do agree about that, about we have to be uh, interculturally competent. But although I have something to ask you about, I read about interculturally competence. There, there is some kind of an attributes to become a interculturally competent, uh, competent person one of which is ethnocentrism. So what do you think about ethnocentrism and how we deal with people with high level of ethnocentrism? Thank you, Andini. Okay, thank you, Shara, for the question. So yeah, Andini, you can answer the question. All right, uh, thank you so much for the question, Sheila. Um, all right, first of all, Yes, uh, yeah, there are uh, some uh, parts, right? If you want to be uh, interculturally competent, uh, that is uh, like ethnocentrism. And uh, ethnocentrism in, uh, right, sorry, right? Excuse me, can you uh, repeat your question, please? So that I... Okay, uh, it's okay. So uh, what do you think about ethnocentrism and how do we deal with people who have high level of ethnocentrism in order to interculturally competent? All right, all right, thank you so much. Thank you so much for the question. All right, ethnocentrism is, uh, uh, is the, uh, what, what we can say? Uh, is evaluation of other cultures that according to uh, preconceptions is uh, uh, originating in the standards of the, the custom of one's own culture. Okay, so 
uh, means that uh, ethnocentrism is like uh, you are in uh, one customs or one uh, elements of the cultures that is uh, uh, th that centrism, like you think that your own uh, culture is better than uh, the other cultures. And now uh, how do we deal with people that is uh, having a high ethnocentrism to be uh, interculturally competent, right? Okay. Uh, how to deal with them is we can, uh, you know, first, like we, uh, as I uh, mentioned earlier, that we can uh, appreciate first, appreciate their culture, appreciate their uh, customs, right? Appreciate them. And then we can uh, learn about their culture without uh, claiming, without claiming uh, disrespectfully, like I said earlier. And how to deal with them is, like uh, you should, you should what it is. Um, you should uh, know uh, the customs first, so that uh, you can be more familiar with the customs. All right, and to deal with them, to be intercultural, uh, uh, interculturally competent, uh, we can. Uh, actually take uh, learn take times i mean take uh, learning to, uh, from them about their cultures about their customs so that uh, uh, we can it, you know like uh, we can be familiar with the customs of them okay is that enough to answer your questions sheila it's okay. Thank you, Andini, for sharing your thoughts. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Angela, for the question. And yeah, is there any question? Because I think we still have time, yeah? Again, you can ask the question by typing the question in the chat box or just raise your hand. Please. Um, is there any, if there is not uh, any question, we can end uh, today's webinar. Uh, sorry, moderator, can I add something? Oh yeah, sure. Uh, for the last uh, question, I can add more uh, some answers so that the question can be more clear uh, through uh, my email so we can uh interact more and i can uh, share my thoughts about the, your question shella is that okay okay so uh you asked me my email or kind of things yes like that can I? okay i'll type it on the chat box okay, thank you so much shella thank you so You're much welcome Okay, uh, I think there is no uh, other questions. So yeah, finally, now we have reached the end of this webinar. I would like to say thank you to all of the presenters for the great presentation and material and to the audiences for their active participation. So this concludes this webinar today. We hope you have learned and enjoyed the presentation. Thank you for your attention. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you. Yes, you're welcome. Also, thank you, everyone.